Do the best. Talking about that, look at the view. They just can't keep us away, can they? Probably cooking egg on my thigh. Oh, the brown guy playing rock and roll, what's your space? Welcome to the video guys and in this one I'll be talking about what went down at Sigit Festival earlier this week, including a few surprises regarding Arctic Monkeys live performance and some potential clues as to what this new era and album is going to entail. And if you're not yet subscribed make sure you do because as I've mentioned in previous videos I'll be covering absolutely everything Arctic Monkeys in the lead up to this new album. Now for this video I wanted to do something a little bit different given that I was on holiday so I've put together a bit of a vlog or for you Americans out there vlog. Chapters are in the description as usual so if you want to get straight to the festival stuff you can or you could just sit back and enjoy the full video get the popcorn ready this is going to be a longer one so we actually arrived in Budapest the day before the festival. Turns out there's a lot to do in Budapest as I soon found out. And if you haven't been to Budapest before, I highly recommend going. The weather was fantastic, over 30 degrees the whole time we were there. Although it must be said we are in the middle of a heat wave in Europe at the moment. Not only did we find Budapest to be a lot more affordable than other European cities, it's also a lot less busy than other European cities, so I found myself really at peace there and a lot more relaxed, I'd say. So Budapest has been pretty damn cheap so far. It's about £4 for a cocktail. £4 for a pina colada, what's that? About $8. Pretty cheap. Something I recently learned as well is that Buda and Pest are actually two distinct cities within Budapest. Little known fact about Budapest, there's actually two places, Buda and Pest. Across the river over there, that is Buda and we're currently stood in Pest. So, Buda, Pest. <laughs> Buda, Pest. Budapest. Now, I'm not really one for museums and looking at buildings and stuff, but I honestly thoroughly enjoyed taking in the amazing views here. Look at the view. Uh, So one of the things that's really surprised me about Budapest not being here before is the architecture. It's one of the prettiest cities I've ever seen and really easy on the eye. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that. The parliament building is absolutely insane. Take a look at that. You see, it's these kind of views that really improve your mental health. And on the first day, we just chilled out, enjoyed some drinks and some nice food. Jesus, it's hot. I think it's about 31 degrees here in Budapest. Probably cooking egg on my thigh. Uh, quick pit stop at the Hard Rock Cafe, as is customary every time I visit a city. Quick pint, and then we'll talk to you soon. Right, so what have we got here? Then some more Beatles memorabilia. Nice little picture of Paul and George there. I even tried some traditional Hungarian cuisine, which was interesting to say the least. So we're at this restaurant called Kiosk, and I've ordered a traditional Hungarian dish. I think it's a modern take on a traditional Hungarian chicken soup. It's a guinea fowl soup. Come and have a look, come and have a look over it. I'm gonna take a, take a little bite, have a go on this one. Certainly an interesting flavour. I think I know why there aren't many Hungarian spots in London. So, I guess to summarise my opinions on this dish, it's not just for Hungarians. If you're hungry, this dish contains all of the necessary things that you need in a dish. Vegetables, some sort of carb, there and some sort of noodle type things in here, and the protein. Sort of a European ramen, if you will. But it doesn't really hit the spot in the same way. 
So day two was the day of the festival. We went for just the Monday, so we avoided camping, which is always a positive, I guess, especially in this heat. The walk up to the main festival site was actually super pleasant, and the campsites did look more spacious and less crowded than those that you'd see in the UK. Although that might be the case because a lot of people didn't end up camping, given that you can get into the city centre via metro in about 15 to 25 minutes. So I reckon a lot of people just stayed in hotels. All right, so we're on our way to Sigurd Festival. Um, just crossing the bridge now because it's actually on an island, which I didn't realise. Um, yeah, see you on there. And we are in. No queue. My God, it is hot. It's what, about 32 degrees, 33? Time for a pint. Of course, they start playing as soon as I start recording. Pint acquired. News just in, Sam Fender's just cancelled, which we are pretty gutted about. Apparently he's got laryngitis, which isn't much you can really do there. Very short notice though, pretty gutted to see him cancel. Uh, but it's meant that Holly Humberstone, who's quite an interesting up and coming artist, is higher up the bill, which is obviously great for her and that should be really good. But yeah, it's apparently Sam cancelled quite a few of his EU festivals, so don't know what's going on there. Nonetheless, Holly Humberstone, Inhaler, I think we're seeing, and Arts and Monkeys. That should be quite a nice end to the evening. One thing I really enjoyed about Sigurd Festival was the sheer plethora of things that you could do there before the music started. As I walked through the festival site, I kind of couldn't help myself but stop at every stall and kiosk and get involved. The festival was, I guess, like a proper festival. There were lots of wholesome activities that you could do in and around the music. They even had a beach area at the festival, which is a really nice thing to do in the mornings, we found. Before the music starts, you can just sit on the sand with a cold drink or a cold beer and just enjoy the sun. And in terms of activities, they even had things like yoga and percussion classes going on. Something for everybody, really. A lot of fun and lots of variety. Just adding our pins onto the board. Two Brits abroad, coming from London. They just can't keep us away, can they? So this wall is all about things you want to do before you die. For me, it's got to be either Kiss You or Leaper, Man United winning the Premier League again, which looks like it's not going to happen ever, to be honest, considering how far we've fallen. Or it's probably me headlining the other stage of last summer, uh, which is possible, unlikely, but you never know what could happen. Not Lots the main stage. The main stage is a bit. Is a bit. Yeah, it's a bit far. The other stage, I've got a chance. The brown guy playing rock and roll, what do you expect? Um, but I've got some amazing tunes for the bike line. So I'm going to go with that. So. Barely legible. Might need to work on my hand right in there. Headline the other stage of Vasto. Vasto 54 or something. There we go. Onwards. So, thoughts on Sigit so far? Well, I mean, the tagline is Island of Freedom and I 100% agree with that really. It's such a freeing feeling being here and it's so kind of sparse and spacious. And if you compare this sort of festival to Reading and Leeds, for example, um, you always kind of feel like crowded at Reading and Leeds. There's always so much commotion and a lot going on. And I guess Sigit is just the complete opposite of that. It's just 
really sort of calm and relaxing and you really kind of feel free and at peace uh, which is really refreshing compared to English festivals you know the kind of clientele is also a little bit different there's a lot more kind of older people here and by older I mean people in their sort of mid to late 20s early 30s um, no kind of annoying teenagers sorry any teenagers that are watching this video it's not really much asbo behavior either everyone seems pretty chill really polite um, no one's kind of setting fire to their tents <laughs> like you probably expect in England so all around really good experience so far um, and I think we're gonna head to uh, to the main stage now to catch some live music so the music actually started a bit later on than I was expecting to be honest around 4 p.m. here's a little montage of the bands that we watched <laughs> Course, here's a montage of the headliners, Arts and Monkeys. is a wrap just saw out some monkeys uh, looks great sounded great absolutely amazing set uh, my phone's about to die so I will tell all back in the studio they sounded fantastic and even looked fantastic also even good old LG seems to think so so what I'm hoping you can tell from this clip here is that Arts at Monkeys debuted a brand new stage design at Sigit Festival there's now this huge circular screen in the middle of the stage and also rounded cavities for the amps and keyboard rigs and things like that
things like that. There definitely seems to be a circular theme going on here, a bit like the six-sided shape theme with Tranquility Base. They also debuted new merch designs as well at the event. You can see here that circular shape now on one of the new tees. Now, since the gig, I've been doing a little bit more reading online around this thing, and I think I know what direction the band are headed in. There's definitely more that meets the eye with this new set design, and I think the band are teasing some things, in particular with some of the TV channels that the round screen was showing. Too much to discuss in detail in this video, but I will be covering that in a video very, very soon. That is if the band don't announce something in the next 48 hours. So we were feeling a little bit worse for wear, to be honest, the next morning, but we attempted to break down what we made of Arctic Monkey's performance regardless. <laughs> So it is the next morning and we're at this uh, posh restaurant called Da Brumbra, getting some meze in the city in Budapest um, and we're trying to dissect what happened last night basically over a lemonade, not a pint this time because I went a little bit too hard so I'm feeling a little bit rough to be honest. I guess the first thing to kind of point out was the new set design. It was very interesting. So obviously the Tranquility Base campaign ended. Rather than just having a plain set, they had a very interesting set that we've not actually seen before with like a big circle in the middle of the stage. Really odd though, because I feel like as a band they wouldn't usually go with a new set unless there was a new campaign or a new album. So my kind of thinking is that maybe what's happened is the new album was going to be released and it's been delayed but they've still got the new set for the new album so is this just a stopgap or is this circular sort of new design that we're seeing of significance which is quite an interesting question to pose because I guess with the tranquility based store they had that kind of six-sided shape and everything that we've seen so far seems to be circular which is really odd we'll see what comes of it all right so we've uh, we've got some garlicky gamba to start off with. It's basically a um, giant tuck rim with, in here, it looks like a parsley, garlic and chilli olive oil uh, dressing. This tastes ab absolutely amazing. Like, I feel like food just hits different when you're in Europe compared to how it does in England. Um, so glad that I've tasted it. So good. Could eat a whole plate of these. <laughs> So Arts and Monkeys obviously didn't debut any new songs, which obviously wasn't a surprise. And I actually think in a way that was a positive because if they had have debuted new songs and had a new album out, probably a third to a half of the set would have been new songs. And the fact that they did have new music out, what that kind of meant was that the set list was almost the best of Arts and Monkeys compilation, which is quite cool. It was basically just banger after banger after banger. And, uh, um, in terms of the actual set, they opened with a view from the afternoon and they came on with so much energy and maintained that energy throughout the performance. And I think that one of my like criticisms of the Tranquility Base tour was that a lot of the songs were kind of slow paced and as a result the set was kind of not low energy but it was kind of low tempo throughout the whole set really. And this concert was completely different. You know, this live set was just high energy almost from start to finish, uh, which is really refreshing to see. Matt on drums looking honestly looks like a new drummer, looks like his old self. The drums just sounded incredible and really tight as well. The whole band were just super tight, uh, which was kind of surprising considering they've only played a handful of shows so far. Um, so yeah, really excited for kind of what's to come. So the, uh, the mains have just arrived. I've gone for a curry curry chicken on a, on a bed of tomato rice, it looks like, and this kind of red roast pepper, it looks like, maybe, and parsley, tomato sauce. Uh, let's have a go on this one. Get a bit of the sauce in there. That's unreal. That is actually unreal. That sauce is incredible. Wow. Close down those out of the water. And what have you gone for? That's like a chicken tagine, right? Chihuahua. So Jenny and I have now swapped dishes. Always do this at restaurants just so we can taste what each other has had. I've got a um, chicken shawarma now uh, that I'm going to have a little taste of. Absolutely 
absolutely unreal that. Reminds me a little bit of Indian food in a way. In terms of like how much flavour each bite packs. Tastes a bit like coronation chicken. Yeah, yeah, like a like a like a good sort of in a good way. Of coronation <laughs> chicken. And it's kind of on, on a on a bed of this fluffy and elastic flatbread as well. Which just like brings the whole thing together. It's super nice. Mm. So on to dessert which is included for three in the lunchtime offer. We've got a date brownie. I think this is a tahini cream, which is quite an interesting addition. Um, and we've got some pistachio and pomegranate seeds. That pistachio cream is incredible. Let's have a little taste of this. Uh, it's got more like a fudge-like texture, I think, than a, than a brownie-like texture. Certainly interesting, very different. It's not as sweet as I thought it would be, but very easy to uh, to eat this. Really, really nice. We even did a literal wash up of the performance at Budapest's famous thermal bathhouse, whose name I cannot pronounce, so I'll put it on screen now. Take a look. So we are currently in the queue for the uh, thermal spas uh, in Buda, which is ideal considering the night we had last night uh, and the heat outside currently. See you inside. Okay, so we made it to the main um, bathhouse in Budapest. Um, it's been a really, really nice way to spend your afternoon here, especially after a full on day at the festival with all those booze. One thing that I did mention before is if you have an actual ticket for the festival, included in that ticket price is actually use of the bathhouse. Are completely free, so you get a coupon to the house and you can use it all day. So we've been here pretty much all afternoon and it's been a really nice kind of peaceful way to spend your afternoon, although it is pretty crowded as you probably expect in August. Um, but it's been a great way to kind of detox and do the sauna and steam rooms and uh, really kind of rest up after the festival day. Our final day in the mighty Budapest. We genuinely had the best time. I think it's a very underrated place, and if you haven't been, you should definitely consider going. Before I give you my thoughts on some of the other bands that were playing at Sigurd Festival, if you are enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and turn that notification bell on if you are subscribed so you don't miss any Arctic Monkeys updates. Enjoy the rest of the video. All right, so that pretty much wraps up our time in Budapest now. Got our suitcases on our way back to the airport. Um, one thing that I thought would be good to, <laughs> one thing that I thought would be good to kind of talk about was the kind of other highlights from Sigit. Not just Arctic Monkeys, obviously. Um, we saw Holly Humberstone. Her set was pretty great, but quite short. It was only about 45 minutes. Um, I reckon had she had a bit more notice, um, obviously Sam Fender didn't play, if she had a bit more notice that she was going to be uh, on right before Arts of Monkeys, I think she probably would have extended the set to about an hour, which is really, really good, something very different, obviously, to Arts of Monkeys, but I think she kind of got the crowd going uh, and was received really well. Uh, who else did we see? We saw Ice Age, which were a Danish band, they're quite good. Uh, probably the highlight, though, of the night for me was probably, say, this Hungarian band called Carson Coma, which were a really big surprise. Was not expecting them to be that great. Apparently they've been around for ages. So it's a shame that they're not um, as big as they would have been had they sung in English basically. I think because they're a Hungarian band, um, obviously they're not really global, but at the same time, they were a really pleasant surprise. Really, really good band. Really sort of eccentric as well. Kind of reminded me a little bit of a cross between sort of Freddie Mercury uh, and who else did you say, Jenny, that they sounded a bit like? Harry Styles, yeah. Yeah, looks a bit like a cross between sort of Harry Styles uh, and like Freddie Mercury. The front man was certainly very entertaining. Um, so they were, they were really good. Who else did we see? We saw Inhaler, who were on the, uh, not on the kind of main stage, but in one of the tents, and they drew probably the biggest crowd in that tent. Um, and they were really, really good also. Uh, yeah, speak more at the airport. So, flight's delayed by about 20 minutes. Just sat in some sports bar in the airport with an orange juice. Um, and that pretty much rounds off the trip. Any closing remarks? Entertaining for the video, no closing remarks. Uh, I really enjoyed Budapest. I 
think it's an underrated city and I think people should visit more. It's a perfect place to go with a partner or with friends, I reckon. Um, the bathhouse was great. Also, really good food, which is quite surprising. I think if London needs anything, it needs more bathhouses like Budapest. And it definitely, definitely needs more hummus bars. Um, yeah, that pretty much rounds off the trip. Hopefully we'll be in London in about four hours. But we'll see. Never know with the current delays at airports this summer. Let's just see if this works. Oh, it's gone off. Oh, why has it gone off? I don't know. It's been too long talking about the camera. Start again, start again. <laughs> right, start stopping. Start. You filming? I swear I've got a thing on me. It's a bit flat, that show.